your your Saturday assignment for this week. It covers two chapters, chapter 31, which deals with the subjunctive mood, and chapter 32, which uh, deals with the infinitive. We're going to try to get both of these on this one video. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, if we run out of time on it, I'll, I'll split the two and make, it, make another one for chapter 32. Uh, the basic thing uh, uh, that you want to learn note about the subjunctive mood is it's very easy to recognize uh, and uh, it has some very specific characteristics. Uh, uh, remember we're moving out of the indicative mood now so it doesn't time is not the, the important thing here it's the it's the aspect the present subjunctive is continuing action and the aorist subjunctive is undefined action so uh, that's, those are the important things. The thing that stands out the most about the subjunctive mood is uh, that the connecting vowel is is a lengthened vowel. And so when you see, for instance, uh, Lu O with an omega rather than an omicron, uh, then you, uh, uh, not, not in the first uh, singular, but uh, like in the first plural, Lu O men would, would have an omega instead of an omicron. And that runs throughout uh, uh, the situation. What I would encourage you to do is to be sure to read the English uh, grammar and uh, then uh, then compare that to the Greek grammar. And this is on pages 288 and 289. And uh, you will want to uh, uh, just read that very carefully and, and uh, note what it is. Your paradigm for the subjunctive is at 31.9 on page 290. And uh, as you look at that, you'll see uh, that it's uh, how, how uh, it stands out. If you compare the words in the left column to the words in the right column on that paradigm, you can see uh, what the difference is. Uh, the one in the middle is the paradigm for, for the verb, the subjunctive, a, me. And then the middle passive, um, um, paradigm is follows that and and what he does there is compares the subjunctive to the indicative with luo and as you can see it is even in that it's the same thing the length and connecting vowel is what stands out so I would encourage you to, to look very carefully at that 3111 begins uh, the um, paradigms for the uh, aorist subjunctive and when you uh, when you look at that again you will see the same thing you have the aorist stem uh, with the addition of the sigma it's not the sigma alpha because of the length and vowel and that we know when those two things come together the alpha is going to drop out but uh, if you just notice that in that left column uh, you'll see first aorist in the middle column or the second column, it is the uh, uh, it is the second aorist, and again, it's the same thing: the chain stem, which is the sign of the second aorist, and then then the uh, uh, then the lengthened uh, connecting vowels. So, uh, I'll just read that. that first of all, uh, notice the active, then notice the middle, and then notice the passive, and and the third paradigm. And, and that's similar to what you already know. Uh, the use of the theta, not the theta eta, because of the addition of the length and vowel. But uh, just uh, notice that uh, for first aorist, second aorist as well. Uh, in both subjunctive and indicative, he's giving you that uh, to compare. He does that with contract verbs uh, at 31.12, and I would encourage you to, to read that as well. Now, the uh, uh, halftime review, again, I want to uh, call on you to, to really use that as a review because it will help you a great deal. Uh, the rest of this uh, chapter is, is very important because he deals with the uses of the subjunctive. Uh, there are some words that go with the subjunctive, uh, words like hina and uh, aon and on uh, as a... a and, and, and whenever you see these, you're going to know that it's certainly it's not indicative, and uh, generally it's going to be 
uh, it's going to be subjunctive. So read that very carefully. Note those words. Make you a chart if you want to, and uh, uh, add all of that together. He introduces you in 31.15 to conditional sentences or conditional statements, as he calls them. We're going to see those again in chapter 35. So I would encourage you just to read this uh, carefully, pay attention to it, but we'll come back to it a little bit later on. Then uh, in independent clauses, uh, the subjunctive is used to exhort, and uh, uh, it's also used in a deliberative sense, as he points out here. Uh, so, so you want to just just read read all of these uh, together. The uh, thirty-one eighteen is a review of the clues that he gives you. I would call your attention to that. You may want to put that in your notebook as well. And then notice your uh, uh, odds and ends. Uh, he talks about negation, uh, where you use double negatives. Uh, in English, that's incorrect to use. In Greek, it is not incorrect. In fact, it's emphatic is, is what it is. So yeah, you want to, to read that and pay attention to it. You have the, uh, the master non-indicative verb chart. Uh, on uh, uh, beginning on page 296, pay close attention to that, and then of course use your use your summary as well. Now the vocabulary you only have two words, uh, lithos, and uh, then uh, uh, toyutas, toyute, uh, to, uh, to, uh, yeah. Anyway, and toyutan. So those are the are the uh, vocabulary words that you want to pay attention to, and read your. Uh, uh, read your uh, uh, advanced material as well. Uh, just read through it and, and see what you can learn from that. So in chapter 31, your exercise is going to be parsing 1 through 10 and then translating sentences 1, 2, 3, 4, and 10. Now, I'm going to move on to the infinitive. The infinitive is not declined, so there are several forms of it, and you'll you will see that, but the forms are based on tense and voice. So we'll we'll see that. Read the overview, look at the grammar for both English and Greek, and then uh, notice your paradigm, which is on on the uh, top, actually on the bottom of 299. He gives you the morpheme. That's just uh, what's going to be uh, the thing that's going to make you recognize the infinitive. But you can see it in the uh, in the paradigm uh, at 32.5 on the top of page 300, and for the present, first aorist, second aorist, and perfect. And what you will notice about it is that uh, uh, it has essentially the same thing uh, for the stems with the addition of, addition of the endings. You have the sigma alpha in the first aorist. You have the change stem in the second aorist. And you have the the uh, reduplication in in the perfect. So he gives you some good hints. He gives you some meanings of the infinitives, and there are uh, a good many of those. Uh, it is a non-indicative verb. So uh, notice what he says about the in odds and ends about the negation and so forth. Uh, and then read carefully what he says about the translation uh, because. Infinitives are often uh, idiomatic expressions, and they're going to, uh, uh, it's going to take uh, a little bit of, of, uh, of studying to, uh, uh, to figure that out. So you want to read uh, the kinds of uh, infinitives and the way they're used uh, in, this, uh, in, this long, in this long section. Now, your summary will be uh, beginning on page 306, and again, I encourage you to read through that. You know, again, have two vocabulary words, uh, dikas, and uh, and then mellow. Mellow is a word that means I'm about to. Then your advanced uh, information, uh, follow that up and, and read through that, if you will. And then your exercise uh, in uh, chapter 32, exercise 32, is going to be parsing 1 through 10, and then uh, translating sentences 2, 4, 6, and 10. And that should uh, get you up for, for your Saturday assignment.